Howdy, Chris Klein, director of Butterfly Ridge Butterfly Conservation here for episode number seven of Landscaping for Life. Don't know if you can see my breath in the video here. It's pretty cold in the nature center. In fact, if I sneak a peek at our weather monitor over there, it's a whopping 25 degrees in here. But, um, but hey, that's okay. And uh, happy to announce we finally got some snow, so that's exciting. Um, I think the Phoenix metropolitan area got measurable snow this year before we did, so, so that's kind of exciting. We've got snow now. And so, um, oh, also want to point out my new sweatshirt, our new design for our t-shirts this year. Uh, design was done by Kevin Morgan down in Athens. We're real pleased with it, so hopefully you all will swing by the visitor center this year and pick up a t-shirt. Um, here the last few episodes I've been discussing some different groups of butterflies and their particular caterpillar host plants and whatnot. And I want to continue with that today. And so today we will be talking about the Vanessas. Okay. And um, probably most of you always thought Vanessa was a girl's name. And actually it is the genus name for a group of butterflies who are typically referred to as ladies. So I, I, I guess the two kind of kind of go together, you know. Um, and so our Vanessas that we have here in Southeast Ohio uh, that we see here at Butterfly Ridge uh, are the American Lady, the Painted Lady, and the Red Admiral. Those are all Vanessas. And then if you go out west, you will also find the West Coast Lady, but they don't make it all the way back here to Ohio. Um, and kind of to me, the interesting thing about the Vanessas is actually how easy the caterpillars are to find if you simply know where to look. That, that's kind of the trick is to know where to look. And so we'll kind of take each, each Vanessa here one at a time. And we will start with the Red Admiral. Okay, it's a butterfly fairly common here in Southeast Ohio. Uh, and in fact, it is the cover butterfly on the Kaufman and Brock field guide here. Um, the Red Admiral, it uses members of the nettle family as its caterpillar host. So here in Southeast Ohio, we have stinging nettles. Um, we also have what's called false nettle, and they're all in the same family. Needless to say, poking around in the stinging nettles to, to try to find caterpillars has, its, has certain disadvantages. And so here at Butterfly Ridge, we've planted a lot of false nettle. And last year, we, we actually got pretty good at finding the caterpillars in the false nettles. Um, one thing with the Vanessa caterpillars is they, they tend to be very messy, messy caterpillars. Their, their nests are really messy. Um, they're very much the way I like to live in my office and my wife doesn't care for it very much. Um, but like if you have a patch of stinging nettle, if you have a patch of false nettle, what you do is you look kind of on the, the top uppermost part of the plant or the, the, the out at the edges of the branches and you're looking for leaves that have all kind of been sewn together and most likely inside you'll find a caterpillar with little spikies on him that is your red admiral caterpillar and then usually there's going to be a lot of frass which is the fancy name for caterpillar poop there will be a lot of frass in that nest as well and so the red admiral once again they will use both stinging nettle and false nettle as their caterpillar host plant um, as we move on the American lady, that's probably our most common of the ladies that we have here at Butterfly Ridge. And they use uh, pussy toes and cudweed 
as their caterpillar host plants and I'll be I'll, I'll be sure to show you pictures of, of those plants they're really actually pretty nondescript plants my hunch is if you're not a botany nerd that you have probably stepped on cud weed and pussy toes time and time and time again and not realized you were stepping on anything special okay um, and what we have found, we actually have two different kinds of pussy toes here at Butterfly Ridge, and we have two different kinds of cud weeds. Um, and it seems that the American ladies, they prefer the cud weed that blooms earlier in the season. I forget which one that is, but I'll be sure to make a note uh, in the video here. Um, but they seem to prefer that earlier of the cud weeds. And then they will also um, lay eggs and the caterpillars will feed in the base, like the basal rosettes of the pussy toes. So once again, what you're looking for is a bunch of leaves that have been sewn together with a bunch of frass and all kinds of garbage um, tangled up in that nest. And if you just simply pull those leaves and pull all that gunk apart, normally there's going to be a caterpillar hiding in there. Once again, all these butterflies, all these Vanessas, the caterpillars have lots of little spikies on them. But you don't have to worry. They, they're not stinging spikies or anything like that. I think, you know, I think it's kind of like maybe the family dog. He barks a good game, but he doesn't back up the bark. Um, the Vanessa caterpillars are kind of the same way. They look scary, but um, they don't pack much of a bite. So... Um, so that was the American lady. And then we also have painted lady here, but not very often. Um, in fact, of the, the four years since we started working on this project, I think I've only seen painted ladies here at Butterfly Ridge two of those four years. Um, what they use as their caterpillar host plant is thistle. And so, consequently, we plant a lot of thistle here. Uh, once again, there'll be messy nesters, probably sewing leaves together, or, you know, larger leaves, kind of curling it up and sewing it all together. Um, and once again, lots of frass and whatnot in there. Realize, when I say that they sew the leaves together, realize caterpillars of both butterflies and moths have a spinneret just like a spider does and they can actually you know um, spin silk and so it's that silk that the butterfly caterpillars use to to make these nests to sew these leaves up together and then they hang out inside of it so um so yeah so caterpillars they can spin silk just like uh, spiders can and so um once again we've planted a lot of thistle here a lot of field thistle, some tall thistle. Now a thistle that we have that we're actually not real happy about and we that's it's on the hit list to try to er eradicate and that is the Canada thistle. The problem with the Canada thistle versus the other two. First off, the field thistle and the tall thistle are natives. Um, that's Circium discolor and Circium altissimum. Uh, those are both native plants. Whereas the Canada thistle is not native to uh, the United States, not native here in Ohio. And the Canada thistle tends to grow really, really thick patches. Um, a very prolific seed producer. So even when you start trying to dig that Canada thistle out, you know, the key is to get rid of it before it can go to seed. But even so, if, if it's been in that location for a while, as you remove it, you're still going to be removing it for the next four or five years. Because as you dig in there to remove that plant, you know, you're going to be exposing new seeds, turning that soil over, and it'll keep growing until you're able to totally, you know, take care of that seed bank. Um, keep in mind, using Roundup on the Canada thistle, you'll still have the same problem. Okay, you're still going to have Canada thistles for the next five years that you're going to have to remove. The Roundup does nothing to prevent the seeds from germinating. Um, plus, you know, the Roundup then gets in the water system and 
and does what it does and kills things you weren't meaning to kill and whatnot. So that's why here at Butterfly Ridge, we do primarily mechanical removal of plants that we don't want. Um, there's a, a, a time and a place for Roundup and, and wiping out the Canada thistle is not the, the time or place for that. And so uh, once again today I wanted to share about the Vanessas um, because actually I'm sure that you've seen them. Uh, you maybe didn't realize what you were seeing. And, um, and I want to make sure that you're familiar with what those host plants look like because once again if you if you own property out here in the sticks, like where we are, um, I'm willing to bet that you've got some kind of nettle, some kind of cud weed, some kind of pussy toes on your property. So uh, it's important to, to keep those things there and, and kind of, you know, keep an eye out for them and try and nurture them along a little bit. Because uh, once again, the more, the more of those plants you have, the more butterflies you'll have. And so, um, Enjoy the snow if, you, if you're that kind of person. Me, I don't especially like getting in the snow anymore. But if you're a snow person, enjoy our new snow that we've got. And we will see you next Monday. Bye.